Uh, thank you, Kian Corla. I want to begin by thanking everybody who contributed to this debate and particularly thank those parties and independents who have indicated their support for this motion. The motion in the view of the Social Democrats is a very important one. It sets out clearly the weaknesses in our employment protection provisions, which give rise to the kind of low pay and poor conditions, which as a modern society, we simply should not tolerate. It also proposes how we can address these. Minister, you spoke about the true picture of Ireland. I'll tell you what that is. Minister, it should be a matter of shame that almost one in four workers are working uh, on low pay and struggling to survive in poverty. It should be a matter of, sh of shame that such a significant number of our workers are in insecure employment and without access to the statutory entitlements which many of us take for granted. How do you survive without, for example, an entitlement to sick, sick leave? The answer is that you don't survive and you end up either going to work while you're sick or else not being able to pay for your rent or your other bills. How do you operate in a situation where you don't know from week to week or even from day to day what you are expected to work? How do you plan childcare or arrange other activities outside of work? The truth is that we are becoming an increasingly two-tier workforce. Those in established, secure employment without de with decent pay and conditions on the one hand, and on the other hand, a growing number of predominantly, work, of predominantly younger, lower paid workers in precarious conditions with limited protections. The absence of collective bargaining and the denial of the right to representation in the workplace have undoubtedly led to this situation. Before the election, the Irish Congress of Trade Unions appealed to all parties to commit to including a specific paragraph in the programme for government in order to ensure an enhanced focus on creating good jobs and protecting working rights. It is quite incredible that none of the three parties of government regarded this issue as being sufficiently important to include in their programme. Not only that, but on examination of the programme for government, it reveals that there is actually no reference at all to workers' rights, no reference to collective bargaining, and no reference to the right to representation. It really beggars belief that the section entitled A New Social Contract says nothing about workers' rights, nor does the section on reimagining and renewing the economy, nor bafflingly under the heading Social Dialogue. You really have to ask if there is anybody in Fianna Fáil, in Fine Gael, or in the Green Party who is remotely interested in workers' rights. The commitment which Congress requested was a short paragraph which we have reproduced in our motion. It's taken from the New Decade, New Approach document drawn up by both the Irish and UK governments. And that was to restore power sharing in Northern Ireland. And it was accepted by all five main parties there. That document commits to an, and to an enhanced focus on creating good jobs and protecting working rights. And it agrees that access to good jobs where workers have a voice that provides a level of autonomy, a decent income, security of tenure, satisfying work in the right quantities and decent working conditions should be integral to public policy given how this contributes to better health and well-being by tackling inequalities, building self-efficacy and combating poverty. The Minister for Foreign Affairs, then Thornish the Simon Coveney, actually negotiated that document and called it a fair and balanced package. Where is Mr Coveney tonight? 
Where is he and his government uh, colleagues uh, who said that we should be supporting these rights in Northern Ireland? How can they not do the same in the Republic? Do people in Ireland not deserve the same protections as those in the North? Is there no recognition on this side of the border that these rights are integral to a fair and equal society, which rejects the normalization of inequality and poverty? Or does this government believe that only applies in the North? The motion before us tonight, Minister, is about workers' rights. It is a disgrace that at no point during your contribution tonight did you actually engage in that issue or mention the term you, workers' Deputy, rights. Time is up, I'm afraid. We, Count Corley, we strongly appeal to government to withdraw their meaningless amendment, to honour that resolution that they themselves drafted, to show respect to workers and to withdraw that motion and support this motion here tonight. I strongly com com commend the motion before us to the House. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, Deputy Shortall.